What is up, dogs? It's your boy, Mike Mason, here for a special demo from the Francis Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, with an artist that, that I truly respect and consider a friend, uh, Lewis Wilson. This dude's been around for ages. Um, this is something of a sequel to the uh, episode where he was talking about his time working with Disney and, and that sort of thing. But it's um, probably the longest demo that I filmed where he did this entire mermaid and gave some really incredible advice for sculpting. Um, I wanted to join you guys for this intro just um, to express my appreciation to Lewis and then also uh, to Greg Lee Francis, the owner of Lee Francis Studios, and to his family who I met. Um, they were incredibly kind. I just I got the just the best vibe from them. If any of y'all are out in Vegas, I can't encourage you enough to stop by the studio. Um, we're not going to do a big hangout thing. This is going to be quick. Uh, Carrie's with you in the chat, so shout outs to Carrie. Much love. Um, and then, yeah, I did have uh, some present packs, and I, I was hinting about this last week, but these are something special that I do like every other year, I guess. Um, I make these packs that have as many stickers as I can find, throwing in even the older ones, uh, and then a wrapped present that the value is you know, well over the cost. They're like 24 bucks and then there's like potentially 40, whatever. I don't know. There's a lot of million, those things minimum it's covering the cost of the pack, but you also get all these stickers and, uh, color samples from Boro batch, like two of their CFLs and then a UV color. They're a dope ass deal. And they're part of the hunger fund thing. So a couple bucks goes to feeding America per pack as well. In addition to, helping fund printing more stickers and keeping this party going. So um, I have a few of those to give away at the end of the demo. So for those of you who stick around, uh, we'll be giving a few of those away and they'll hopefully get there in time to be under your tree. Um, I wanted to just take a second and show you guys where you can um, sign up or see what classes are going on at Lee Francis. Um, this is at their website at, at uh, leefrancisstudios.com. It's linked in the video description. Um, they have all kinds of classes going on, not just uh, visiting artist workshops. Like they've got a couple coming up uh, with Cheryl Bott, incredible uh, sculptor and one of the best Imery makers. And then Eli Maze, I know you guys have seen him on the channel and he's some, another person I really, really dig and consider a friend and respect his work a lot. Um, those are the type of shot glasses you saw get made in uh, the demo that he did for the channel cool ass dude man this is an awesome class so anyways this is this type of stuff that's going on there and then there's also just intermediate glass tubing like all sorts of classes of different sculptures and vortex marbles and you know, the dank variety of classes here so this is in las vegas just tuck that away in your mental files you know if, if you're going to be in vegas for the glasscraft and beat expo um or just in general you know to go catch a show or you know do what people do in vegas i don't know coke and strippers uh, whatever um anyways uh and then yeah the just as long as i mentioned it the glasscraft and beat expo um don't forget about that i'm not gonna do a big thing but uh man there's like 250 or something classes there a ton of them are borrowed classes with like roger paramore and others shit's tight um, anyways, I, I, I think that's about all that I wanted to jump into. Um, let's, let's pop this show off and I hope you guys enjoy.
Pacino. It's probably one of the better uh, uh, skin colors. This is the elusive Glastronic screen. Ross. Oh yeah. Uh, Ross had some. I bought 30 pounds before they went out of business. Two days before it was announced, there's no more glass products. Right. That's a yellow for her hair, body, hair, the, uh, the body, upper body, fish body, hair. I'll do this. Just regular speed like nobody's here. So I don't know if you've noticed now and then, but I, I I tend to be quick sometimes. There's a lot of stuff that you don't need to waste. So what I'm gonna do is condense down the uh, the gather that will become the uh, fish part of the mermaid. This will be pretty quick, probably 10, 15 minutes. But it'll, it'll show you a style, but then also, it'll also, you'll see me do the head again with an application of putting the head on the mermaid, and it will have the chin strut, and you'll see how the, the chin strut actually works. And then her hair will have these this kind of a curl thing, Lucho does his stylized hair on most of his people and when I studied with him I did this thing that I kind of made up on my own and he, he says that, that it's something he had never seen and for me it worked because I couldn't do the hair that he does. And most of the hair he puts on people is pretty much like you would see in, in ancient Rome or Greece with the, uh, uh, the ruling class and uh, upper echelon people. So I'm going to do a little gather glass here. I want it to be long, and then I'm going to smooth it out, and then I'm going to flatten it and do it in a long U. And then after I do that, I'm going to punt it into the bottom of it and then do the uh, body freehanded. Also, this will show you the spine line, which is, uh, I don't know, Mike, if I've had that on, where you've seen me do something with the spine line before. And again, the spine line is, is a, a loose shell thing that was probably taught you know, going back centuries in the Italians. And basically you're making a mushroom out of the torso of the body. You flatten it down and you put a spine line on the back of it, you draw it down and you end up with this beautiful human form. And it's the most uh, reverse uh, uh, fabricated thing that you could ever think of. I mean, it's totally backwards from the way you think it should be. Huh. And I've always just called it a spine line, and I think Lucio might have a different name for it. I'm not out of stories, I'm just working on this. So the fish part of the mermaid is going to be this recurve. You want it to recurve back around. And again, here's the double pull, but just from a different angle. You see, I, I use these double pulls constantly, and it can be the fin of a fish, it could be a wing, it could be the wizard's arm. It's just a way of manipulating the glass to give texture to the surface. And then you try and match those guys up.
this Glastronics Green is really good, but it, it has this thing where it likes to kind of get a striation over it where it looks as though it was worked cold. And it really wasn't, but it just has that look. If you fire polish, it still looks like it needs to be fire polished. Anytime you punny something, you want to look at it from four full directions. What I've been telling you guys to do is clean it up as you're going along. Now I'm going to marver this in my right hand down so I can mimic the oval that is the waist area here. So I want those two to match up. Now, probably in about two minutes, I'll have a gather of glass here that will look like, in, in somebody's off-beat mind, might think that that's the, the woman's form here. And then I'm going to move it around a little bit and change it. And then I'm going to heat the whole thing up and squish it into a big, flat mustard. Straight on down. I'm going to totally ruin it. And then I'm going to do a spine line. I'm going to pull it back up. And this beautiful, perfect, I hope so perfect, human form will emerge from it. down in so it melts in cleanly with the green. Now this will be cool. It's like the first time I saw this, it just freaked me out. I'm saying, oh my God, that, the simplicity of that is like, it's almost rude. <laughs> I immediately like, but it, it's just like, wow, that came out of there. So you're going to heat this whole thing up. And the idea is that this will all melt down and I'm going to flatten it. I'm going to use my little knife and put a line that will be the spine on the back of it. And you have to do a whole lot of these. And I still do not feel perfectly good when I do them uh, that I know without a doubt that I'll nail it. And if I'm talking about how cool it is, I really need to nail it in a class. So, there's a human form in there. A really good one. And I don't really understand exactly how it works. But the whole thing is that when you pull it back out, that spine line, it just holds the whole thing together. When you lay the spine line in, it pushes a little bit of the glass out to the side. And then you steal glass from the top to one side, and then from the top to the other side. Flatten it out a little bit wide. If you've never seen his hippocampus, it's my one of my favorite pieces he makes. If you get a chance later tonight, you're looking on his site. 
look up the hippocampus that he does it is out of this world. I love it so it's much. a uh, processional horse that Neptune would have had under the sea carrying his chariot. But it's it's a serpent, sea serpent from the waist down and a horse from the from the waist up. Now, are there people that won't be able to get here on um, uh, Wednesday with things that are made tomorrow? If they need to make arrangements to get stuff shipped to them or whatever, because when they finish, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do her breasts here, and there's a technique on this with this tool here. This is my favorite tool in the world. It's a bone curat. It is a surgical amputation tool for when you get a bone, uh, uh, you lose a limb and the bone is jagged and you do an undercut of the flesh. You, you use this as a drawing down tool. It's a reverse. It's got a, just a slight curve. It's got a sharp edge. And you pull it down on the bone and you use it to file away bits of bone that if you did your amputation flap over it, you don't want a sharp piece of bone to poke through. So you smooth over it. So this is a smoothing tool. It's called bone curat. And but it is the perfect best best tool. Everybody's got a butter knife. You get a butter knife, take it to a bench grinder, flatten it off. Great. Because the way your body is, this is how you want to do application of certain things and less things with a knife with a blade this way. So the bone curat, I come as underneath, almost as an underwire. To the breast. So I add a gather glass here to the right breast, melt that in, gather a glass to the left breast, you let these melt in, and there's a technique, and you come in with this edge tool. I'm going to do one to the left so you guys can see one to the right here. I'm going to do the first one over here. I'm going to take the right edge of this into the apex of the sternum underneath into the axilla. And you can, if you look at the right breast, that it doesn't have, it goes down unnatural. It, it's drooping from the skin and not the breast itself. It's the it's supportive tissue. So now I'm going up into here. Do so you see immediately what that did underneath? Yeah lifted it up. Okay, now I'm going to do it one more. It just... <laughs> wow. And so now I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. And then now I'm going to heat the side of the right breast and draw from the right breast through the axilla and I'm going to make the shoulder from this gatherer glass that I'm stealing. I'm, I'm slimming it up and into the shoulder, almost like a padded shirt or a uh, uh, padded okay. shoulder. So it's, it's all done in one thing, and you're going to steal a little bit, bit of the glass, take it over, and it in, increases the size. But, but you can see what's added there, it's almost a flange of skin that goes from here to there. It's right here. Now this one I'm going to do again the same way. And this will be cut down, this area up top, almost a quarter of an inch. Now I'm heating, you can actually see a fold where I had the upper section of the breast touch the upper sh upper sh the upper chest. So I'm touching the top of the breast and I'm going to that shoulder again. And now you can see it's smoothed out. So now is when it starts to get good. I'm going to heat up the neck area and I'm going to steal glass away until I see the level that I want for the height. Uh, this is too high, the shoulders, in proportion to the waist to the breast. It's too tall from here up. So I'm going to heat this from the back and the front, the back and the front, and I'm going to steal from the middle, pull it straight sideways, roll it over. I'm rolling it there to cool this because molten glass will only go to colder glass. So now I'm going to steal from the middle to there. Now I'm going to flip it around, steal from the middle to there. 
flip it around, steal from the middle to there. So I'm just stealing glass from the middle, taking it to the shoulder. I'm building up the shoulder by stealing glass that would have been below the neck. Weird seeing these guys, it's like 45 years ago. <laughs> so cool. Okay, so now, now I'm going to do the neck, the chin strut, and then the arms. I, I want to keep heat into the upper torso. I don't go back down here at all. So I'm going to heat this stage, sec, uh, stage two. You can still see stages in colored glass. Sometimes it's just harder. You want to make sure you're welded real cleanly there. I'm making that little bit of the neck a little bit less. That's the chin. Because this is a fantasy piece, I have art artistic license to do some things. So I'm going to make her hands more trailing, aquatic y. There, there we are. But I'm not going to make an attempt to give her hands because she will look better this way. It, even if I did perfect hands, she looks better this way because of the flow. Again, looking for the angle that this will work at, and that angle is right here. We we'll try and match the previous arm. And again, I too much of a bend there. So cool. And right now will be what I'm going to do the nipples because if I did them before I did the hands, there's a chance that they'll melt in. And I'm not adding nipples to the breast. I'm going to heat the breast, touch it with a rod, and pull the nipple out of it. If I were to try and add a little teeny dot of glass to a nipple, chances are more than likely it will be a cold shield dot. and you can't add it on, it's easier to pull it out. Ah. Oh, wow. It's a real simple thing, but it, it's so much better that way. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to go with the chin strut again. It's a nice mm -hmm. little pose, OK. Yeah, it is. Now, these are things that would be hard to teach you in the class but I wanted you to see this um, because your mind will remember this. Your, your hands are going to remember that and it'll get to it. But right now, if I throw stuff at you, you're going to learn it. And it might be 10, 12 years before you can make use of it. But you're seeing it done now. Now I've got this gather going, that gather going. That's so the heat goes up and makes a good weld. And because she's a mermaid, I'm going to let her head fall backwards so that her hair will be able to trail. And, and again, this is a thing. Now I'm going to, the other thing, it, it didn't, I wasn't able to steal, yeah, this is it. There was that chin that was right in there where I didn't have to add anything to it. Yeah. 
So if done correctly, you should be able to make something very nice and only add a... Um, and I have to only add a nose. The eye is pushed in and up, and you're pushing glass up from pretty much from the, from the cheek to make the eye. Use that same tool regardless of the size of the head? Yeah, it, it just pretty much depends on how, how hard I push on it. No, I didn't want Jimmy Durant to. Wow. And you go for the silhouette. So cool. Now the the way I'm doing the hair is I'm gonna do a little roll on this thing right here. I'm gonna fold it over onto itself. To make this little fat gather, I'm going to do about eight or nine runs of her hair that will be flowing behind her. Wow. You see how when I folded that down, that it gave depth. I'm going to pull this over here. Wow. Play around with it there, and now, now put it into place. Put it down here. You couldn't have built it down there, but you can put it down there. Wow. You see, see how that's out of the way? Yeah. The tail is protected. Flat, 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 flat. This is another double pole. The same stuff I was showing you earlier. It could be anything you want. You can do anything you want here with it. And then you just Stick it down there, out of the way. The yellow I'm using, I believe, is lemon yellow by Mumka. Cadmiums are horrible for me to work with, and probably most people. Yeah, you look at them and they bubble. Don't you have to heat them under the flame or something? Um, you just have to work slow and I don't work slow and you have to be gentle and I'm not gentle and you have to be not Louie. <laughs> and I know you're still thinking about my brother's nuts. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> He, he lives in Albuquerque, where I live, and and he uh, he's an electrician, and he would be coming through Old Town when I had my gallery down there years and years ago. I'd be teaching the class, he'd drop in, hey, how you doing, Louie, blah, blah, this and that. Everybody in the class would look at his crotch. <laughs> You're telling them the story, aren't you? It's not the way it happened. It didn't go down that way. <laughs> so here is wow. beautiful oh. stuff. Thank you.
What is up, dogs? I'm back. I hope y'all enjoyed that shit. Um, I, I, you know, man, I wanted to just take a moment to uh, say thank you to Lewis Wilson for allowing me to share that. Um, to you know, man, and he was like, "Come on out to the class," and I was like, "What? This is so great." Um, and Eli Maze, who was TAing the class, and then I was mentioning in the beginning and during the chat, um, Greg Lee Francis and his family that I met, they were all so kind. I just, I can't give you all the best, the, the highest recommendation, or more recommendation, um, to go out and check, check this place out. If you see a class there, trust me, man, everybody running in is seriously good cats, um. Yeah, so, uh, I said it in the chat, but, man, if you're just tuning in, I guess we're gonna do some giveaways. <laughs> They're for everybody who watched, but whatever. If you didn't see it in the chat, um, drop some numbers, 1 through 200. And, yeah, I've got, uh, present packs to give away. Uh, and these are fun. These are something I've, I've only done, like, every couple of years. And, yeah, I, I don't want to, like, spoil the surprise, but the, the the present in there is, I mean, if you know my work, you know what I do. Uh, but, man, it's got some really fun stuff in there, a variety uh, that, that really adds up to more than the cost of these packs themselves. And those are on my uh, store. It's linked in the video description. You can always get there, MikeMasonDesign.com. Um, and, yeah, but they also come with all these stickers and then color samples that ABR and Boro Batch were kind enough to send over. So it's, like, two of their newest CFO colors and one of their UV colors. And then they included, like, a whole separate sticker pack. So, like, all the stuff you see on the edge is, is in their packs and then even more. And then I've got one of my packs that has – you might get everything in this picture or you might get, like, other stuff. Basically, I laid out a bunch of packs and I went in on some old – uh, stickers that I saved. So these have some of the stickers, some of the oldest Torch Talk stickers, in addition to all the newest ones that I have in stock. You get five of the uh, the Baby Yoda ones, because I know everybody's hyped on the Baby Yoda thing. So yeah, you get a bunch of those, so you can give some to a friend. Um, but I've got a few of those to give away. So, um, drop some numbers into the uh, old chatty chat there. And, um, and we'll do this. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the homie is putting in multiple numbers, dude. You're definitely going to be disqualified. <laughs> Let's don't don't fuck around. Um MPG Foo says, "Are these live feeds on a schedule one a week at this time?" Yeah, man. Um thank you for joining us. And dude, yeah, we've been doing this every Tuesday night around this time, around 11 o'clock uh, Eastern time uh for years now. And this whole thing started as just me and the dogs, you know, getting crunk and sharing fun stuff. It's kind of part of my, you know, learning experience. I was traveling the country learning, you know, with some incredible artists and, you know, maybe doing my best to share a little something, you know, not, not spoiling my teacher's work or anything, but, you know, trying to master these techniques and then have something to share. And it's evolved into uh, comprehensive coverage of the glassworking industry. And that's kind of been my vision to provide an ESPN level of coverage for glass working. Um, and, you know, and I've, I feel very honored to be in this position. It's it's all because you guys are here making this thing a, a very a positive experience and a big party. So, yeah, man, if you just made it, kudos. Thank you for joining us. And, yeah, this is something, man. We've been – a lot of these cats in the chat, we've been having this party together you know, for a good four or five years now. And it, I mean, it means a lot. This is one of the most positive things in my life, you know, and, uh, man, it really all adds up to my ability to do something very special for all of us. And, you know, something that I hope people will appreciate, you know, even years down the road, um, mediums change, times change, everything changes, but man, you know, to be in this position to, to capture process documentation, of, of a very special part of the glass world. You know, I mean, Corning, for example, is just picking up on, on I mean, they've known, but they, I, they haven't had the, the impetus and, and the ability to truly uh, put their focus on it, I think, you know, and now you, they, they've accepted their first pipe into the collection and uh, they made a beautiful video. If you've not seen it, you guys simply must go to the Corning uh, channel and, and watch that video about David Colton's piece. It has interviews with Salt and Z, 
uh, and Susie Silbert, the curator there, and even Eric Goldschmidt, the homie who you've seen do demos here, and this is a good friend of mine, somebody I think is an amazing human, not just an amazing glass worker. And anyways, that video, like, I should talk about Eric more. I mean, he, he is somebody who came kind of out of our world and is now like one of the program homies at Corning. And, you know, to have people who kind of bridged this gap, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say what's what. I just feel like if Eric hadn't been there in this position... Maybe we wouldn't be having this talk about them making a tear-jerking video about pipes in 2019. I don't know. I just feel like he's the perfect person to have, you know, representing this side of our thing. And, you know, I'm doing my best to document things. But at the end of the day, I'm the guy who gets to curse and talk about dank heat, you know, while everybody else has to kind of contextualize this in a more professional way. That's the freedom y'all have given me. What are we talking about anymore? I don't know. But <laughs> um, I really do appreciate what, what you guys have all made possible by being here. That's a pretty long answer to what's going on here, but there's a very specific reason that we're here every Tuesday, and it's like a mission from Glass God to share dank glass working and, you know, put a, put a spotlight uh, and a positive light on what we're doing here uh, in glass, you know, as, as, with an emphasis on pipe making, but, you know, I'll, I'm a... I'm a glass slut, man. I'll film any damn glass I can. Don't get me wrong. I and but it's always been part of my mission to kind of, you know, in doing this, put put us put everybody on that same playing field. And I I I sincerely feel like the rest of the world this year, perhaps, you know, is kind of catching up. And anyway, so that that's enough stuff for me, man. If you guys all put your numbers in, I'll do, we'll do this giveaway now. And everybody's like, do the giveaway. Stop talking about torch top. But no, this thing is something, um, man, it really has be become something special and, you know, for me and it means a lot that, that, that y'all are here making this party possible and making it possible to, to capture this stuff, you know, like it, like I'm not some trust fund kid, you guys, like, like if, if there weren't, all, you know, these sponsors and then you guys making it a party and all of this coming together, it, it just wouldn't be possible. And, you know, when you leave it to some trust fund kid, man, I mean, that's you're off to their next whim, you know, the next person trying to cash in as soon as it don't work, they're out. I do this because I love it. <laughs> Anyways, not not to get all there, not, I don't try to put myself above anybody else. There's a lot of amazing cats, you know. Um, all right, anyways, let's actually pick some numbers here. I'm getting rambly. I'm sorry. I got a lot, thought, a lot of thoughts about what we're doing here and why we do it and why we keep doing it and, you know, where we're going to do it in the future and all of that shit. And it's all just predicated on this beautiful party that we get to have here right now and, you know, to inspire you guys and have you guys inspire me back. I stole that a little from uh, Mr. Rogers, but man, you know, well, what better source? <laughs> he said something like that to a person who had said something to him. And I, I was like, that's touching, you know, that's how I feel when people say something to me and it, this this cycle of inspiration that we're, we're trapped in or whatever together so okay um everybody's numbers are in i'm not gonna say anything more here let's pick some numbers all right uh yo the cat who put in a bunch of numbers man <laughs> i'm gonna take like your first number that i see that's it it's uh damn it actually looks like carrie cleaned that up thank you so much carrie hate to hate to be like that but uh one number all right clickety 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 clack First present pack is going to potentially... Wait, wait, I lost the window with the chat. Ah. All right, here we go. 63Z. I don't see a 63. We're going to keep picking numbers until we get direct hits. 99. Oh, I see a 99. Where is it? That's my dog, Bill Colehop. Um, hell yeah, homie. Uh... Just shoot me a message. I, I think I've got your address because you're one of the subscribers. But if the address is different or something, let me know. Um, that's a good win, man. I remember uh, the homie. He just did a special pack for some of you guys, and we gave that away. He had a bunch of old stickers and color samples and stuff. I don't know. Maybe karma's real. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, Bill, you're the man. I really appreciate you, dude. You're a you're like a true supporter and just a super nice guy. Like, well, you're, you're, I love you, man. Fuck yeah. All right, let's pick another winner. Clickety clack. 74. Nope. 
Okay, I see a couple of 89s. We're going to have to go. No, no. One of them's 189. And then Robert Page at 89. Robert, please uh, shoot me an email at mikemason at gmail.com uh, with your address. Please do that fast. I don't like having to sort giveaway stuff like a week after the giveaway. So just please shoot me that address right away, and I will get you your present pack in time to sneak under your Christmas tree. Or you can just open it when you get it. Whatever's clever. I know how y'all do. But I think it's cute that y'all have the option of waiting. That's the point. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, let's pick a third winner for one of these packs. I'm feeling uh, very, very Santa Claus-ish out here. 178. Nope. I feel a little cold with my, uh, like, hit me up fast speech. But, man, I tell you, I like to do a lot of giveaways. I like to do them every week. You know, I really do appreciate you guys. Um, and, you know, it's... It's something nice to do, but when it becomes a chore, I hope you all can understand why I'm like, please just help me knock this out so I'm not like dealing with previous giveaways, you know, when I'm trying to sort a new one and all that. It just gets a little frustrating. So um, I don't see a 48 either. Clickety clack. Uh oh, we got a 177. Sorry, a Nino glass. Should have taken 100 off that. Oh, wait. I see a Christina Hernandez, 77. I think that's a previous winner, too, but that's okay. I'm not like, you only get to win one a year or something. No, no. If you win more, it just means the universe felt that that, that was for you tonight. So, fuck yeah. Um, yo, thanks to everybody who tuned in. Um, like I said, you guys make this whole thing possible uh, for me. It, it really is like a circle of everyone inspiring one another and being kind to one another. And man, I, I just, that it, it's something I sincerely appreciate. You know, we're getting into that time of the year when it's like time to look back a little bit, you know, and then look forward. And man, I, I, I'm looking back at just so much beauty and kindness over the year. And so much of it is a result of this community and what you guys have made it possible for me to share. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing that again in 2020. Thanks so much to you know the sponsors who helped me get to all these things and film this stuff. Um, Greg, thank you for having me out to your beautiful studio and to meet your beautiful family. That was a truly kind experience. Shout out to Eli who TA'd that joint. Uh, I was hanging out with him afterwards. That was a chill evening. Um, and, and again, thanks to all y'all for tuning in. I hope y'all had a good time. Fuck yeah. Until next time, y'all. Peace.